Hi, everyone. I'm Joel Baird, the general manager of Missoula Community Access Television. And I'm Kim Anderson. I'm on the board of MCAT, and I'm also the associate director of Humanities Montana. Thanks for joining us on our live show. It's Monday, April the 7th, around 4 p.m., and we have lots of guests. So we're supposed Busy. to be fast. Yes. So I'll go really fast through my MCAT. CAT material. I want to remind high school students that um, the Western Montana High School Film Festival is still going on. You have until April the 22nd to get your um, submissions into MCAT. You don't have to give us a DVD. You could, for instance, put it on YouTube or Vimeo and send us the link. Scott is uh, doing the controls this afternoon. Thanks, Scott. He's showing the website. It has a high school film festival for 2014. It's our 10th year. I can't believe it. And it's going to be a little different than yeah. previous years. Lots of prizes. Yeah, there. that's the difference. Like, there's at least 10 categories that high school students could enter. Animation, dramatic narrative, comedic narrative, music, video, um, an art film, a documentary, a feel-good one, a public <laughs> service announcement, a sports video. And there's a, a one-minute video, $100 prizes in each of in those each categories. In each of those categories. So we're kind of that's spreading the amazing. joy. Yeah. Last, in the past, we had, like, big cash prize. And then smaller and smaller, like 500 300 200 $100 is nothing to sneeze at. No, it still isn't. Achoo, no. <laughs> and then I have a special announcement. Some people may remember oh, Greg Nowak, yeah, the octopus, as he's known, because he could play 30 people at a time and win, right. like, all the games. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he wins, misses one. But he can go in a circle and play people, and he also can play, like, a team. So that's what he's going to do on MCAT. He's going to um, play a team of five other people. They are going to get to talk among themselves and stuff. Right. You know, they'll be like, oh, what do you think it should So they're do? not playing five different games. They're playing no, one they're, game. Yeah, it's yeah. Like five against one to the octopus. And it's a three-hour battle wow. of chess. And um, he says this program is for chess awareness, entertainment, and education. The Allies versus the Octopus. The it's going to be on MCAT Sunday, <laughs> the May 4th, from 1 p.m. to 4 Kind of like Captain America. It really Allies. is. <laughs> this is our Creative Cat um, Film uh, Contest. You can win a whole mm. year of free cat food, or $365. There are also other prizes like, um, oh, thanks, Scott. There's other prizes like donated from the um, Missoula Animal Clinic, $50 in services. Donated from the Green Light that has uh, 406 design products are um, t-shirts and mugs and other stuff like that. So I pushed the deadline back. It says the deadline is March 31st, which passed, but um, I don't have enough entry. So that that deadline's the same as high school fell. I mean, come on, you guys. Everyone yeah. loves cat videos. There was like seven, but that's not enough. Okay, then finally, because <laughs> we have so many guests, I'm going to remind some parents, caregivers, yeah. what have you. Summer's just around the corner. What are you going to do with those kids? Um, <laughs> Send the them cats, to Media Arts Camp. Yeah, we're offering three. One is um, called Media um, Exploration. No, oh, there we go. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and you could click on that, Scott, if you want to, where it says Summer Camps, because I made the page, and I'm very proud. Nice work. And I know. It has oh. my um, little sister in it. Well, if it comes up. <laughs> you can see my little sister <laughs> holding a cat, I swear. Anyway, I guess Never you're not mind. seeing that. I should just say what they are. Media Exploration, where kids go around to radio stations and TV stations in town. That's June 16th through the 20th. Animation with uh, Play-Doh wireframe um, drawing cells and whatnot. Um, oh, yeah, that was the, the, anyway, it was a different one. <laughs> that my little sister's in the, the cat contest. And also wow. movie making where um, kids will work off mm. of a script and have actors to boss around. Though, you know what we were thinking of? I don't know if people have seen this at home. It's a YouTube video. Where adults are, are performing. <gasps> it's, I know what you're You know say. what I'm saying? And then kids do the voiceover. And they write it. Yeah, and they write it. Kids write the script yeah. and then adults say it. Have you guys seen this? Oh my God. It's really it's fun. So funny. It's like so dumb. Like the guy comes up and another guy's like, hey, you want to buy a penguin? Penguin. It's like, yeah, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. You know anyway. <laughs> I thought maybe they should do that. So that would be a good one. That's almost all my stuff to tell you about mm. MCAT goings on, except that MCAT offers training to the general public and a tour of the facility every second Wednesday of the month. It's coming up on April the 9th at 5.30 here at 500. Come learn how to make movies. Yeah. And it's free, the training and tour. So, there are three students here in the Yay. studio. Do you want to introduce yourselves? Sure. I know who you are. C-D-A-M. 
but <laughs> you guys can introduce yourselves too. So my name is Cody Stratton. I am a sophomore at Hellgate High School. Uh, my name is Daria Beto. I'm a junior at Hellgate High School. My name is Michaela Hansen. I'm a sophomore at Sentinel High School. Great. Thank you so much for being yeah. on the show. Yeah. Um, you guys are um, here to help promote um, Missoula's fifth annual Diversity Day. Yes. And you guys are in Respect Club, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, there it is. So I guess we better do one thing at a time. <laughs> Diversity Day is Saturday, April the 12th, which makes it this coming, coming up. Saturday. Yes. It's going to be held indoors. Like in the past, sometimes it's been outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. This time it's going to be inside mm -hmm. at Missoula Senior Citizen Center. And that is um, the corner of 5th and um, South Higgins. Higgins right? Yes. Corner of 5th and South And did I hear correctly, this is the 5th annual mm -hmm. yes. Diversity yes. Day? Yep. Yeah. Well, what you guys are here. What do you want to say about that? You know, it's your chance to. Talk. How did you? How did you get involved with it? Um, and what's going to happen? Well, so do you want to know like the history? Of yeah. Diversity? Whatever. Sure. Okay. Well, when I was in sixth grade, every year in Respect Club they do like a big project, and we said we wanted to do a project to like make sure everyone in the community was being recognized for like differences in so diversity. So we went to the mayor with an proclamation, and he signed it, and then we had a diversity day. So now every year on April 12th in Missoula, it's a holiday called Diversity Day. So we celebrate it now, and it's really Great. fun. We have lots of acts and music. Yeah, I wondered. I don't know how this left off. Scott, did you transfer any video? I can't see. I can only see the top of your head. I'm just one. Oh, you didn't do it. Okay, because you know we've recorded in the past. I thought yeah. it'd be cute to show. Okay. Lots of great things going on. What are what are some of the events this year? Um, we're gonna have some poetry, and mm -hmm. I'm personally going to be performing in a dance on stage. Ooh. So it'll be fun. It's it's just a little um, duet kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of stuff. <laughs> I know I've got the poster, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, we're going to have some, a band, I think, and then some other musical acts, and then at the end, I think we're going to have a DJ and a yeah. dance party. What fun. It does seem really fun. Mm -hmm. It says it's free and fun for the whole family, mm -hmm. and yes. people could learn more about it at ncbimissoula.org. Yep. Um, can you explain to people a little bit about Respect Club, anybody? Cody? Um, so I started in Respect Club in seventh grade at CS Porter. It's a program through Flagship that is just in a lot of the middle schools. Mm -hmm. And, um, we kind of talk about, like, how to create a safer environment at the school and in Missoula as a community. And so that's kind of one of the reasons why Diversity Day sparked it's kind of it's kind of like a bully prevention type mm -hmm. program, not to try to end violence yeah. and stuff like that in the school and in the community. Excellent, because it says this event, you know, this coming Saturday, people, April the twelfth at the Senior Missoula Senior Citizen Center on the corner of uh, South Higgins and Fifth, six p.m. to ten p.m. Nobody has to pay any money, and all sorts of great. Uh, Act one is Respect Club project. Right. Yes. So are you guys going to, oh, it says plus Simone Fielding and Eden Atwood. Eden Atwood, we all know. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they'll be singing. And the and dancing, dancing Lumberjacks. Dancing Lumberjacks, that Act 2. <laughs> Excellent. You know how, is that what you're going to be yeah. in, the Dancing yeah. Lumberjack? Do you have a plaid shirt? Um, no, but my partner does. Okay, good. <laughs> Yeesh and, how do you say that? It says like Yeesh and G. G, G. Top. Taj and Diego. Oh, is that Taj uh, and oh, Diego? Diego. Mm -hmm. Okay, we we're... know um, Diego yeah. because he's done a lot of work at MCAT. Yeah, yeah. he's one of my really good friends. Oh, so. indeed. Oh, that's fun. Diego went to summer camp, mm -hmm. and he really liked it. Um, okay, and Express to Speak. That's you know Taj. from yeah. yeah, Humanities Month. Yeah. Month. Do you guys know City Ghost and DJ Arch? Uh, DJ Arch is Austin. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. And City Ghost is a band that are pr that's performing. I'm gonna be singing like a few songs with them. No oh, cool! You're also oh, talented. 
<laughs> no, double down. So if people want to learn more about it, you could go to ncbimissoula.org. Yeah. And um, I also have the press release, but I think I already said it. Oh, but here's the phone number to call, okay. 541-6891. To learn more about, there's three things you could learn more about. Respect Club, um, Diversity Day, and the National Coalition Building, Building Institute, Institute, NCBI, which has like this chapter in Missoula, but obviously it better be national because it says <laughs> <laughs> national. But Diversity Day is this coming Saturday the 12th and a mm -hmm. fun time for all. It's free and it's a lot of fun and it's one of those great community building uh, projects. And thank you guys for being involved in it. Yeah. Yeah, thank thanks you for being on the show home. too. Have, have fun on that day. Great, thank oh, you. Well. All right, we'll be right back. You guys, we've got tons of guests. I'm scared. <laughs> um, but we'll be right back um, with uh, a book sale from the oh, American Association of the University Women. My favorite. Up next. So stick with it. Hey, what's up, MCAT viewers? I'm Josh Minnie, and I'm here to tell you about a new show we're going to be having on MCAT Channel 7. It's called Wake Up Missoula, and on it there's going to be news, weather, social media, guests, YouTube clips, school board meetings, clips on MCAT from the 1990s, music, and more. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be starting in March every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Check us out. Wake Up Missoula. Hello, how would you like to win $365 and many other prizes? MCAT is putting on the very first Creative Cat Film Contest. To enter, you must make a short video no longer than two minutes in length, and it must involve a cat either directly or indirectly. Send us your video to contest at MCAT.org. Or you can walk into our offices at MCAT at 500 North Higgins, Suite 105. As long as we can see your video, you're in. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Hey, you guys. Welcome back. <laughs> Hi. I ha we have with us uh, members of the American Association of University Women. They're putting on their much-anticipated, beloved annual book scale. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. Um, do you want to introduce yourselves? I'm Nancy Zatra, and I want to add to what you have said that uh, it's the American Association of University Women and Phi Delta Kappa who are putting oh, on the book sale. Excellent. Yes, I did we're, not know we about work Phi together Delta. to to put on this book sale. <laughs> and I'm Ann Sharkey, and I'm a member of AAUW. And I'm Tricia Whalett, and I'm a member of Phi Delta Kappa. Thank you so much for being on the show. Now, this so book pleasure. sale is legendary in Missoula, and I f feel like it's one of the signs of spring, along with crocuses <laughs> and, you know, uh, snow receding up the mountains. How did it start, and, and why is it so successful here in Missoula? It began over 45 years ago. Wow. wow. The AAUW, American Association of University Women, wanted to raise money for scholarships for women at the university. And uh, so that's how it began, and a lot of scholarships have been given over the years. And we partnered with PDK four years ago, and it has been a wonderful partnership because now we have more people to spread the, uh, the books <laughs> as, as well as the proceeds. Great. I think it works so well because Missoula is a community of readers. It is fabulous to go out and get books, but just to watch the people that come to get the books. And you have all kinds. You have collectors, you have hoarders, <laughs> <laughs> and such a diverse interest. And we have so many, many books. And then people re-exchange them year after year. Sure. 
that's super. It you have, you need to devote at least an hour, at least I do, to oh, wend yeah. your way through every table. <laughs> it takes some time. It takes some time indeed. <laughs> Um, we've given people the why. What about the where and when? Yeah. This is out at uh, Orchard Homes Country Life Club, which is out on 3rd, just past Reserve. And the big reader board announces it right there uh, at the edge of the, of the uh, roadway. So uh, you know when you're there. And there's and plenty there's of parking. A, there's a good parking yeah. area. Mm-hmm. And it's a wonderful structure, too. Oh, yeah. I really yeah, like, kind of you know, the... It's over the 100 floor. years old. Oh, I bet. Really? It's, wow. It has a real country-like yeah. feeling about it, even mm-hmm. though the town has developed beyond anyone's wildest dreams west <laughs> of Reserve Street. It still remains kind of a country mm-hmm. life center. So the, the beginning day is Thursday. Yes. yes. 10 a.m. Right. Thursday. No early birds. No, nope. no. Nope. Oh, we okay. open the door at 10. And yeah. the amazing thing is the line of people, the building swallows up this line of people. <laughs> <laughs> and they come inside, and they're all in there walking around and looking, and it's silent because everybody is... Yeah, they want to know. Reading. <laughs> Looking over the pages and reading. It's wonderful. Yeah. And the finds are really uh, They marvelous. can be fantastic, can't oh, yes. they? Yeah, it's like a treasure hunt. Mm-hmm. And we, we, we have little books. <laughs> oh, that's a cute <laughs> one. Large Animal books. <laughs> we have a books book. about Missoula. The way it was. Uh-huh. It's a great book. This one happens to be a, an autographed copy, which is... Grand. So there are lots of wonderful finds, including children's books, cookbooks, novels, historic works. What else? A lot of history. History, History foreign language books. um, There's some large books, art books, and reference books. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And we have a specially priced table that has uh, the real valuable finds on it. Right, because because the otherwise, come in right yeah. Now. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, everything is priced how? It is priced by the inch. By the inch, and right? I love this. Stack them up. Stack it up. We and you measure it. They are, <laughs> and it's a dollar fifty an inch. So if you had ten inches what of books, a bargain. I know. Fifteen dollars. Yeah. The only time it hurt me was the year that I got a copy of The Last Best Place, <laughs> just like this. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's this. So it was pricey, <laughs> but. <laughs> Must have cost you at least four dollars. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> so a lot of opportunities for people to go starts this coming Thursday, mm-hmm. Thursday, ten a.m. Mm-hmm. And will it go till six, seven, seven? eight p.m. on Thursday? Mm-hmm. Wow! Nice. So people are, are you working can come the after nine work. to five. Right. Mm-hmm. Run over There's there. plenty of time to go. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then what happens on Friday? Friday, ten to five. Okay, a little shorter. And Saturday, ten to five. Sunday, ten. To two, yeah. and Sunday is a bag sale, five dollars for a bag of books. Yeah, that's Great. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. but of course, at that point, you're eager to see them go out. We the would door. like to see them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Now, is there still time this week? You know, we're recording this on Monday, April the seventh, mm-hmm. and repeats. Well, it actually repeats for two weeks. So I'm sorry if you're watching this later and you missed the you sale. Missed better, next year. Yeah, keep that's your right. ears to the ground for next year. Um, yeah. but. Are you still looking for donations? Yes. And you want them to come to where the sale is? Yes. Yes. Through Wednesday. Okay. So today's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. If people have books in their home, it might be great to donate them to the sale. Absolutely. In the next few days. We can give them a a receipt for their taxes. Yeah. See, it's sex enough. Yeah. Donations. So there will be people there, because I've got a pile in my basement. There will be people (laughs) there during the day, tomorrow and Wednesday. Oh, great. I'm driving I just warn you, though, we do not want textbooks. No. Because they are very, very hard to sell. Yes. (laughs) Uh, We don't take National Geographics. (laughs) So no magazines? uh, Basically not. um, You want books. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Quilting magazines have always gone out the door almost as fast as they can. Oh, okay. So there are exceptions. There are exceptions. Yeah. (laughs) 
But otherwise, romance novels with oh. embossed, lurid covers are okay. People yeah. like them. Yep. <laughs> yes. Just checking because I have some at home. That were left there. When I was yeah. They were left there by a movie company. I, sure. <laughs> I understand that these are very popular oh, right now. Oh, this, cool. uh, this is comics. called a graphic novel. novel. Mm -hmm. And um, it features comic type characters who are all superheroes but I, we have quite a few of these this oh, year so and I know in. that there are collectors yeah. Yeah. who would yeah. be interested that is interesting you know because mm -hmm. there is that the kind of person that loves the computer sometimes though I don't read you know like the young person of today oh I just watch everything I won't <laughs> read but these illustrated novels are bringing a lot of young people back exactly. to the written mm -hmm. word mm -hmm. and they're yeah. enjoying reading yeah. and of course we all love Books, yeah. uh, real books, where yeah. you turn the pages. Yeah, and, uh, you know you can turn back. Yeah. and there's just something so exciting about being at the sale because it's just tables and tables as far as you can it's, see, yeah, and you, you just know there's going to be treasures there that, mm -hmm. uh, but you don't know what they are. Yeah. <laughs> We better move along because yes. we saw that it's so full. But thank I want to thank so you so much for coming <laughs> yeah. and sharing information about the sale and taking the work it takes to, to put it on. Right. Thanks for doing so this So I hope you again. make a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> we hope so, we too. We do, too. <laughs> Even half a million. Right. Yeah. We'll thank be you. right yes. back, you guys. We have tons of guests in the wings on this edition of Mrs. Alive. Come on, guys. Rolling? Good. When hiking in bear country like this, it's important to remember your essentials, like bear spray and knowing how to use it. Liam, where's my bear spray? Uh, I put it in the bottom <sighs> of your pack. I didn't mean... How am I supposed to get it quickly? When adventuring in bear country, remember, bring bear spray and know how to use it. Hike in groups, make noise, and don't run. Be bear aware. Hello and welcome to MCAT. MCAT stands for Missoula Community Access Television. We are a nonprofit group that helps the community get into broadcasting and communication. How? I'm not sure. We. <laughs> if it's too formal, I mean, people are just going to be like, oh, that's boring. And then if it's too, like, oh, yeah, you don't give a crap. La di da. <laughs> Are you filming this? Yeah. Oops. <laughs> how we train anybody who comes through our doors how to shoot, edit, and produce videos. Whether you like to be in front of the camera or behind, we provide the equipment you need to get started. So come on down. helped me because the coordinators, I've been able to talk to them and they've helped me and get through the hard times and I've learned a lot of new experiences that I would have never done. If I wasn't participating in flagship, I would be playing video games at home. Definitely it's helped me with, you know, my comfort level. Also, you know, I got better grades. They helped me on a study skill, different tips. The flagship program, because after school shouldn't be an afterthought. I was just always kind of Do you want me to get it for you? Well, no, it's no okay. we're fine. But, but what it was happening, um, I could hear echoes. A little reverb, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, during AAUW. Mm -hmm. um, there and we it was, go. It was like, oh, I don't like it. So anyway, Brian, um, Brian, your last name is pronounced Wimple. Wimple, yeah. Okay, Brian Wimple Welcome. is here representing the um, University of Montana Central and Southwest Asian Studies Center. Thanks so much for coming. Thank Lord. you for having me. You're most welcome. Do you want to tell people a little bit about this upcoming conference? So what we're doing uh, in the next couple weeks, coming up on April 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, is bringing in scholars from both the University of Montana community, the Missoula community, and then from around the world we've got uh, Shukri Abed is coming in from Al-Quds University, which is in Jerusalem. Uh, we've got three scholars coming from Shanghai International Studies University in China, and then we've got another... Uh, Uyghur artist who is 
a resident in Berlin, Germany right now, attending the University of Fine Arts there. But he is originally from the western Xinjiang province of China, so he'll kind of give a perspective on that particular population and how they're relating to the Chinese government. We also have a gentleman named Heinrich Shijewski, who works for the Uyghur Human Rights Project in Washington, D.C., so he'll be joining us on the 21st for a keynote. Because wow. the conference is over three days, April 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. That's quite a lineup. Sounds yeah, like, and yeah. I'm sure you've only touched They work that. really hard on this, like, yeah. all year. Yeah, what I touched on right there is just the people who are coming from outside into right. Missoula. We'll right. still have a lot of people from the university faculty and other researchers who work for the University of Montana who will also be doing presentations. Now, is all of this open to the public? Yeah, all free, open to the public. All events will be held in the University Center, otherwise known as UC Theater, third floor of the mm -hmm. University Center at the University of Montana. Uh, but yeah, free and open to the public. Um, I forgot to mention it to you guys, but there is a website people can go to. It is www.umt.edu forward slash CSWA. There will be updates on there with scheduling, etc. Oh, because it stands for Central and Southwest Asia Conference. Yep. Great. So if, if someone makes their way to the universities, Yeah, that'll, website, that'll be the other thing. It'll be posted that, yeah. all over town. We'll have posters going out starting next week to try and you know get the word out there, as right. we're doing here right now tonight, Great. too. Because there'll be stuff going on every day and then yeah, evening. And every single day. Great. I know. It, it really, I mean, when you look at this lineup, um, it's impressive and that you would learn a great deal about regions that you don't know, think yeah. about. I mean, when you mentioned um, Western China, I think a lot of people thought, well, is that Tibet? You know, or is it going mm -hmm. to touch on issues of Tibetan autonomy? So it's going to be similar to the Tibet issue. It'll be from a different perspective, whereas you look at Tibetans, they're obviously Buddhist by mm -hmm. cultural lineage, whereas the people in what's called Xinjiang province are Muslim, mostly, varies a little bit, but mostly Muslim by cultural lineage. So they've got a little bit more, they have their own nuanced relationship with the government in Beijing as well as the countries that surround sure. them. Tibet's got the same thing. It's just a separate aspect of kind of the same issue at that point. It's right. just two different geographical regions, which oddly enough are contiguous to one another, stacked right one on top of the other in Western China. Um, Brian, if you were to recommend to the lay person, right, um, they'd say, well, I actually do have an interest in the region mm -hmm. or in the world at large, right? People just simply, they're in a university town, why not take advantage, you know, of some of the amazing work that is done there right. and offered to the to the general public. If you were to, I guess it's like being in a sushi restaurant, what would you recommend? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But, but if someone had just a, a general natural curiosity, which, which of the, the lectures or events do you think they would most profit from? It's really going to depend on, obviously, if they've got a particular geographical region they're looking at. Uh, there will be presentations, for example, on Syria. Right now, the conflict we have going on in there. Uh, on Thursday, April 24th, Fadi al-Batal, who is a uh, United States as well as Syrian citizen, will be presenting on the issues there. That's from one... 40 to 250 in the afternoon on Thursday. You've got other issues. You look at like the situation in Crimea right now, for example, on Tuesday, the 22nd, from 12, excuse me, 2:30 to 4 o'clock. We've got a presentation by Robert Green, who is the chair at the University of Montana History Department, as well as an MA student there named Kyan Sayer. So they'll both be talking about Russia and its relations with the Muslim world, which does start to come over into the Crimean conflict, as well as other places that Russia is currently currently involving itself in globally. Right. That's what's so amazing is well, that yeah. you know Central and Southwest Asia covers an amazing yeah, and there's very, complexity of cultures and and geography. There's varying definitions too, but yeah. as far as I mean I want to obviously tell people to come to all of our events and watch all the speakers to get as informed a perspective as they want to yeah, gain sure. from what we're trying to give them, but if I were to pick a particular one, I really think that our final keynote on Thursday from 3 to 5, the delegation from Shanghai International Studies University is an extremely interesting one to go to because you're not going to get the Chinese government position on issues in the area, but you can figure that since they're the International, Sh International Studies University at Shanghai, that they're going to give you an approximation of what you're looking at. Yeah, and it's interesting when you mentioned, you know, just picking out a few elements of the conference, these are the stories that are in the headlines now. Mm -hmm. So it is not just an academic exercise, yeah. you know, Syria, yeah. the Crimea. No, it's all um, very current. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
contemporary. Um, you think um, the website is the best thing? I see your phone number here. Yeah, um, I've got 406-243-2247 is my general office okay. line. I'm in there on and off at all times right. throughout the day. It's kind of hard to pin me down as far as that goes. But, yeah, I would recommend the website. We'll have it updated shortly. Great. And the posters will be around. So yeah. go to umt.edu. Yeah. And you'll find it'll be right on the Yeah, all page. you have to do is either do a search in their little search bar at umt.edu, just type in CSWA, it'll take you right to Central and Southwest Asia homepage, or if you want to do the direct link, www.umt.edu slash CSWA. Okay. Brian, thank you so much for coming. I know we better yeah. move along, people. So um, we'll be right back, a brief uh, interval, and we'll have our new guest on you for this edition of the Zulu Live. Let's say you were watching one of MCAD's programs not too long ago. If you or anyone you know wants a copy of our wonderful programming, call us at 542-6228 or email us at MCAT.org. Ask for a dub request and tell us what you want. We'll get it to you. Walk-ins welcome. Just go to 500 North Higgins, Suite 105, just off Spruce. Hi, my name is Sam Schultz. I'm a professional cyclist, I'm a national champion, and I'm a 2012 U.S. Olympian. But more than that, I'm a native Montanan, and I'm proud of the work being done here at home by the Montana Food Bank Network. For over 30 years, MFBN has worked with charities across the state to distribute food items to the one in seven Montanans struggling with hunger, including nearly 46,000 children. To learn how you can help, please visit mfbn.org, because together there's no limit to what we can accomplish. Are you interested in pursuing a job in television and need experience, or are you interested in picking up a new skill? The Zula Community Access Television is a place for you. MCAT can get you trained and ready so you can hit the ground running in television. Call us at 542-6228 or email us mcat.org. And we are back. Um, I don't know if a lot of you realize that April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. It is. I think tonight, Monday, April 7th, the mayor yeah. is expected to give a proclamation That's right. to that fact. Mm. And um, as part of this Awareness Month, um, Amanda Opitz is here from the YWCA talking about safe training. Thanks so much for coming. Yeah, thank you for having me. So you want to explain to people what it is, the safe yeah. training. Yes, yeah. so um, the safe training was born out of the Make Your Move campaign, um, which was started originally in 2012 um, at the city county level. Um, but it's an interagency group that um, was really wanting to look at how we as a community can really address the issue of sexual assault. And so it started originally as a social marketing campaign. We, had a, we have posters that are all over town. Um, and actually in movie theaters as well, there's a ad sort of preview. Um, but it's really focused on prevention and prevention within the vein of bystander intervention. Um, and so some of the posters um, try to kind of flip some of the stereotypes we have around sexual assault and um, to kind of sexually aggressive behavior. So the, the poster would say something like, uh, oh, that girl was so drunk, she'd be easy to hook up with. And then when you read the fine print, it says something like, so, you know, I helped her get out of that situation. Right. So um, what we realize is that we have an incredible resource, which is the 95% of people that are not committing sexually, you know, sexual yeah. assaults. <laughs> and we want to engage them in um, trying to stop sexual predatory behavior. And so the SAFE training was really born out of that first um, Make Your Move social marketing campaign. We really wanted to give it some teeth. And so we introduced the SAFE training, which is actually based on a training that um, they do in Boston at the Boston Rape Crisis Center, mm -hmm. Boston Area Rape Crisis Center. Um, and it's geared specifically towards, towards bartenders and servers as well as security staff. And um, we really are hoping to help train them on how to identify predatory behavior, giving them tools and language so that they can safely step in, and also um, just educating them on the resources that are available. Mm -hmm. um, if they were ever approached by someone who said, you know, I need help, this is a scary situation, or my friend is in a scary situation, they have the tools that they need so that they can 
you know, respond to that appropriately. It's such a great idea because, really I mean, is. those are the people that are kind of on the front lines and, Absolutely. you know, in the venues where often this sort of behavior can occur. So yeah. why not train them? That's yeah. great. Yeah, right in the bar situation. And, you know, originally some um, one representing the Rhino Bar was going to come, but circumstances mm -hmm. prevented them. But Rhino is serving as one of the first bars to say, yes, we think it's important. Mm -hmm. We want our staff to take the training. Yeah, and we have been really pleased and excited to have um, Brad Martins and Kevin Head, the owners of the Rhino, um, really stepped up and said, yes, we care about this. Um, you know, from our end of it, we think, oh, this is such a no-brainer, but you never know um, when you're kind of sitting in your think tank as, um, you know, a service provider, what the interests are going to be of a business owner. Yeah. And, you know, I think we thought that it was going to be a harder sell than it mm -hmm. was, and, um Brad and Kevin just really jumped right on board. They were really enthusiastic. They've been really um, positive about kind of, we want to make this pilot project be really collaborative. So we're going to be working with them after the fact to kind of get feedback and, um, and hear from their staff about what worked, what resonated, um, you know, what examples are relevant for Missoula. You know, we are adapting this from, a, um, you know, a Boston training. Mm -hmm. So that's a completely different scenario in a big metropolitan area like that. So, um, that's yeah, great. They're willing trainers. to be the guinea pigs. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And, yeah. and I'm, I'm sure, you know, in any business community, there's a kind of conservatism like, well, you know, we're just doing what we do. So with them stepping forward, they can give feedback, and then other bar owners might say, right. oh, well, they did it at the Rhino. Yeah, yeah we'll Because do it. I have to believe that creating a safe environment for your clients uh, or clientele is good for business. Yeah. In the absolutely. Long run. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't want to be known as the bar where shady things yeah, happen. Yeah, right. No, one, no one's got your back. Right. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. And um, Scott had put up while we were talking the um, website for the YWCA, mm -hmm. so you can visit that. Is it Missoula YWCA? It's ywcaofmissoula.org. Okay. All one string. Mm -hmm. dot org. So if other um, if other bar owners or businesses see this and mm -hmm. are interested in maybe getting involved in learning more about the program, they can go to the website. They can go to the they website. Can get in touch with you. Or they can call me at the YWCA. Our number is five four three six six nine one. Great. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, Amanda, thank you so much thank for you. being on the show. Great idea. Great and for project. putting this forward. And yeah. thanks to Rhino Bar. They volunteered their staff Absolutely. for the pilot training. Yeah, we're so thankful. Good, Good luck. Thank you. All right, you guys will be right back. We still have three more guests, if you can believe it, before the hour is up on the Zulu Live. <laughs> Here's your best spray, babe. I don't need it. I can outrun them. Look, I ran track in high school. No, you can't. You're not supposed to run from bears. And you did the shot put. Okay, I'll spray you down. What? No, don't spray it! Ah, ah, ah. Hey. My face! My face is burning! My face is burning now! Ah. When hunting in bear country, understand, it puts you at risk. Be smart. Be safe. Be bear aware. Living Art and its upcoming annual fundraiser called The Light Show. 
This Hi. is such a great show and it's such a so great cause. Fun. Tell us a little bit about uh, the cause and how the show came about. So Living Art uses the arts and nature to support healing for people facing illness and loss. And we've been around, we started 20 years ago. And we offer our, our workshops free of charge. We, don't, we didn't want finances to be a barrier because so many people have financial hardships because of chronic illness, because mm -hmm. of illness. Mm -hmm. And so, so we keep having to figure out ways to make that possible. And the light show, this is the 10th year of the light wow. show. That's an achievement. And it, we started out, the idea of the light show, uh, we asked artists to create lamps. Mm -hmm. And it has evolved from them, from that time to, then it was lamps and mirrors. And then some people said, we can't buy any more lamps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah. so then it evolved to create artist's interpretation of the theme of light. So sometimes oh. that's jewelry, sometimes that's clothing, sometimes it's painting. Some yeah. so, so there's a the glass piece, there's Look painting. Um, that, you know, so there's lots of different kinds of interpretations. Oh, I like that, that one that, on the left. Yeah. So, I mean, so I like them both. So, so Katie Patton, um, one of the owners of Four Ravens Gallery, she's also on our board, um, uh, she works in glass. And, oh, and, so the, and that. the piece on the right is yeah. like seven feet tall. Are you kidding? Whoa. That's amazing. <laughs> so, um, and he's a bamboo. He sells in China. <laughs> she's a nurse. And they start doing things together. Wow. It, the one on the right, I don't know if you can see it, but actually it's like the outside is a room. There's like a corner of a room oh, there. Yeah, there's yeah, like yeah. a lampshade on the right. table. Um, there's another glass piece there. Oh, we went amazing. through, yeah. but I guess because we have so many guests. I so so it's, it's it. just really fun to see what what people come yeah. up with. And so we, we, we've, there's a preview this Friday, April 11th. I know this will run after the preview, but it's at Community Medical right. Center at oh, okay. the new oh. Community Cancer Care, the new oncology. Oh, that makes so, sense. So people can have our opportunity to see that great new building as well from 530 to 730 April 11th mm -hmm. and then uh, online people can preview the art as well on our website and, and the, the show itself, itself May yeah. 3rd May 3rd this year it's uh, we have a different theme every year this year it's the Kentucky Derby and oh, I saw the end uh, that's right so, hats big so, hats so hats yes hats and, <laughs> hats and horses jockeys <laughs> John <laughs> so, Perks. So, so, so oh, here's a, a for folks at home. Mom, this is the yeah. website. Yeah, so, so it's a live and silent auction with a seated dinner. We also have entertainment. Mm. So um, we have great uh, bear bait. Uh, Heather uh, from Downtown Dance Collective is kind of overseeing, and bear bait dance is doing a performance. We oh, have that's great. Todd, uh, it's a, our MC, and he's he's. Broadway performer, so there's a whole performance aspect. It's a fun night. Yeah, it is a fun night. Yeah. I remember, yeah. you know, when Sievert uh, Filio yeah. came and did, I recorded yeah. him. So I saw there were lots of people go, and you keep it moving with right. lots of energy. And where is the actual the Hilton Garden? Hilton Garden. Okay, yeah. so it's a big, it starts beautiful at five space. Five and runs till about you know ten, and we have silent auction, hors d'oeuvres, and then go in and sit down and. Have some performance and a nice dinner, and yeah. So it's, oh, and it's, so, a, it's so really people wonderful. dress up, you know. People interpret the theme also in many ways. So sometimes sure. like people wear that's lights part of the fun is the people yeah. watching and all of that. <laughs> and it is a fundraiser, so there is a ticket cost, but you're yes. getting a dinner and you get dinner hors d'oeuvres, you know, some wine at the table. It's you know, right. So you get. You get the stuff. Um, it's seventy-five per person, five sixty for a table of eight. Or six seventy five for a table of ten. So of course you get a discount. The more right. people you right. bam yeah. together, and it's yeah. fun to have a table. Yeah, yeah, because uh, you know all the people right. and so on. So your contact, if you are interested um, in this event, five four nine five three two nine. That will get in touch yeah. with um, Living Art of Montana. Call. Um, you could also go to the website, and there's a Facebook page, and and it people has, can see those yeah, same so pictures. Yeah, so Facebook can you see regular posts about the artists right. and the, yeah. all the silent auction items. Great. But this year we have experiences too, which are going uh, to be silent and live oh. auctions. So experiences with artists and, and nice. or food. There's some food experiences as well, and sometimes artists and food combined together. How great is that? <laughs> well, that's pretty good. <laughs> Play with your food. <laughs> <laughs> So, and you can order uh, tickets online as well. 
Oh, right. that's also yeah. good. Well, it's such a worthy cause again, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been such a successful idea for all these years. Yeah. yeah, people have fun. They say, I can't believe how much fun this yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, best of luck. You've been. Thanks you. so much Thank for popping so by. Much. Yeah. And yeah. Putting it yeah. on again. And uh, this Friday, a community for preview. Yes, that's right. Eleventh for preview or online, livingartofmontana.org, and then May third. Great. Got it. All right, we better go and get two more guests on you for this edition of Missoula Live. We'll be right Talk back. Talk about getting your money's worth today. This is Jacob. He makes cereal for his little brother every morning. He also washes the car, but probably should have rolled the windows up. This is Jacob's dad. He left for Afghanistan almost a year ago. Behind every serviceman and woman, there is a family that serves as well. Now it's our turn. Thanks for holding down the fort, Jacob. Let's all join forces and show our thanks. Oh, hello. I'm Joel Baird, the general manager of Missoula Community Access Television, and I wanted to tell you that we want to start making a new program here at MCAT called Missoula Plays Piano. We just bought this pretty nice piano. It's a Clavinova by Yamaha. And it has four piano voices on it. It also has an electric piano sound, <laughs> a different one. And it has some organs. And it also has a jazz thing. So if you would like to play this piano, all you have to do is call us and let us know when you want to play the piano. And we'll have someone record you playing the piano for up to an hour. As an addition, we've got a green screen so that if you want a custom background, let's say you want to be in a jazz club or um, you don't like that so much, you want to play the organ part. Well, we really are back. I hate to c cut you off. Yeah, like that, but, uh, but you know, when we still have that piano here at MCAT, anyone is welcome to come and play that piano and then go away with a DVD yes. of them doing same. same? So, um, Harold Shinsato is here to talk about. Um, what seems to be coming a, an annual event in, in Missoula. Um, it was known formally as Bar Camp, formally, I don't know how formally, but... Um, <laughs> formerly. Right, yeah. a formerly. lot of people got together to talk about ideas, you know, I mean, entrepreneurship, computer usage, these kinds of things. But, you know, for the, um, the, the lay person watching, could you explain to them you know, briefly, what, what does it, this event encompass? Who is it for? Well, that's, a, that's an interesting question. It's not necessarily easy to answer right. mm -hmm. because it kind of depends on who shows up. Oh, oh. sure. And that's, um, so we were called Bar Camp before, and Bar Camps were originally organized after uh, this thing called Foo Camp, which was a computer publisher, and a lot of games people, philosophers, mm -hmm. um, writers, and they'd show up, and they'd actually camp, and they had a grid, and on the grid, the things that people were interested in talking about, they, they would put on the grid, which would have times and places, like under a tree, or under that tent, or in, <laughs> in the offices of O'Reilly. Um, so our bar camp, which is now we're calling Mach, Mach 1, um, has always had a strong element of technology in it, and we've also um, appealed to the, because Missoula is such a place for nonprofits, mm -hmm. um, has the highest nonprofit per capita, according to this research right. I've done. And to me, that is a big part of why I love Missoula, is because it has such heart. And a lot of people, they think, you know, technology in nonprofits and that doesn't, doesn't necessarily click. But the nonprofits, they need the technology people. Absolutely, and, yeah. And the technology people oftentimes want to give back. Um, they want to be part of something meaningful. And what's interesting is um, we brought in the arts as well. So those three communities have been, have been the core of the conversation. And we brought in um, what we call lightning keynotes. So the first bar camps didn't have lightning keynotes. It was just what, what's called open space. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of open space. Yeah. It's, um, it's a meeting method that bar camp is sort of like, but 
um, if you look into actual bar camps with the grids and uh, open space was where it all came from from a gentleman called Harrison Owen and Harrison Owen did organizational um, work he actually used to be he was studying to be a priest and that kind of all fell apart for him when he saw what was going on in the South in the Civil Rights Movement and he ended up going into organizational development transformation and he spent a lot, he spent over a year, like 18 months, organizing a conference, bringing in speakers, lining them up, paying them, getting the facilities, setting the schedule, dealing with all the politics of who goes and fits where. And after it was all done, the participants said, what a great conference. You know, the best part were the coffee breaks. Yeah. And that broke his heart. Yeah. That really broke his heart. And the story is after the second martini, um, he came up with the open space where right. pretty much all coffee breaks the whole way through. Yeah. So this meeting is going to be kind of informal in that way, too. Yes. So Friday night, um, April 11th at 6.30 p.m. at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, 310 South Curtis, right. we'll, um, we'll have all the lightning keynotes, and we'll have at least eight some really great people and when, from out of state. When you say lightning, you mean they're real brief. They're, they're brief. Kind of like TED Talks. Right, Everyone exactly. knows TED Talks uh -huh. now. Yeah, now they do. 15 so minutes, 12 it'll minutes. It'll probably yeah. more about 10, about 10 minutes. So yeah. fun on all sorts of different topics. So yeah. that's neat. Not just computers, not just yeah. technology, not just organizational structure, not about necessarily art or nonprofits. So depending yeah. on who shows up, and what their interests it might dictate. So if you're not through. into a particular talk, but hang around, something different is going to happen in 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be the one night, Harold, or more? So that's the lightning keynotes are Friday night, mm -hmm. and that's open to the public. You can come and not pay. Um, Saturday will be the open space, and Saturday you can come and bring whatever topic you are interested in. You can ask questions. Well, the experts that are going to be there on Friday will also be available on Saturday. Neat. Great. And that's also at Emma Dickinson? Yes. Great. All right, we better go because Brandy's waiting out there, but thank you so much for bringing this information by. Thank you for having me on. And I want to make a little plug for Mock Central. Oh, please. Yes, <laughs> yes. Mock Central is uh, Jeff Peoples' work, and it's downtown. Uh, a chance for a collaborative co-working space, and it's kind of associated with the with the mock conference as well. Okay, yeah, M A C H. M A C H. Just They're Google in the old radio mock, building. Yeah. mock central. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good All luck. Right, we'll be right back with Brandy. Was I supposed to get up? You're fine. It's okay. <laughs> Just send Brandy on in. Tell her to run. Hi friends, Max Baucus here. We Montanans are outdoor people. As we enjoy our state's scenic beauty this summer, remember that there's a high danger of wildfires. Many existing fires have been caused by human carelessness. These could have been prevented by a little precaution on our parts. I encourage everyone to take responsibility by observing fire restrictions. You can find fire restriction information at firerestrictions.us mt or by visiting your local land management office. MUSAP, which stands for Missoula Underage Substance Abuse Program. One of our favorite guests who we've saved <laughs> for last. Well, yes. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and something's coming up, a community conversation, Wednesday, April the 16th, from 7 to 8.30 p.m. at City Life Community Center. Correct. What is it about? Yeah, we're excited. Starting on April 14th, the 14th through the 19th, is Prescription Drug Misuse Awareness Week here in Missoula, proclaimed by the mayor and the county commissioners. And so the community conversation is just an opportunity for a free event for the public to come and ask questions. We'll have some experts on hand. Uh, we like to keep it a casual conversation, it's not just people being spoken to. Um, and just talking about the dangers of prescription drug misuse. It's right. sort of scary and becoming somewhat of an epidemic. Um, in our community. Yeah. And there are experts. I'll just mention because I have this poster. Sure. Tony King, 
Um, and it says Farm D. Yes, he's a pharmacist at oh. Walgreens. Okay, Montana Prescription Drug Registry. He's gonna, he yes. couldn't be an expert about that. <laughs> Detective Dean Crestenson, Missoula Police Department Drug Division. Dr. Mark C. Mental, um, Community Medical Center Safe Prescriber Program. Yes. Ellie Ryle, Clark Fork Coalition. Yes. No. Yeah, I, you're probably curious about right. that. Right, what's that connection? We're, really, that name we're really excited about the Clark Fork Coalition. All of our partners are amazing. But we really want to show the community how you can partner with unusual suspects. Okay. Yeah. And the Clark Fork Coalition is a great example because what people are doing is they're flushing their unused or unneeded prescription <gasps> oh. drugs down their oh. toilet. And it's really hurting our waterways, which is hurting our fish. Right. And so if you don't think, hey, I don't misuse prescription drugs or, you know, I don't really care about that, but you really care about our rivers, it's another reason to think about what you do with your prescription oh, drugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Because yeah. often there, there is um, another way of getting rid of the prescription drugs, right? Yeah. Isn't there a collection program yeah, there's, annually? Yeah, there's three annual? good ways to get rid of them. The first is there's a 24-hour drop box at the police department. You can drop oh. them off anytime, no questions asked. They take only pills. Second of all, you can crush up your pills and mix them in coffee grounds or cat litter and throw them away in the garbage can. Right. Oh. Or third, there is we take we have two take backs a year, and the one is April twenty sixth at the mall. And same thing, you can bring your pills in their bottles, no questions asked, and dispose of them properly. Right. Because there is a lot of problems, you know, and, and I know we've discussed this before where people they tend to leave the medicines lying around yeah. because they're expensive or, oh, I got a prescription for these painkillers. Right. I don't know if the pain, you know, I might throw my back out, right. so I'll keep this and codeine. And every week in the Resilient, you see thefts from home. I oh, mean, yeah, people, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just... Or just kids, you know, it's from a their magnet. parents. Yeah. Right. So the, the average age of kids misusing prescription drugs on purpose is 12. And oh. well, the reason we went towards misuse awareness instead of abuse is because abuse is a different story. But probably all of us at some point or another have misused a prescription drug, prescription drug used it when it was expired, sure. um, used it after surgery that didn't apply to a different injury. Or given a um, pill to a friend. Given a pill to a friend. You're camping yeah. and you, you sprained your ankle and I have my painkillers with me. Mm -hmm. Or we've even probably given our kids prescriptions misuse. Um, the most common one is it's really late at night and you just take the... A teaspoon out of the kitchen cabinet instead of, instead of using the measuring that came with the medicine. So that's misuse. So we're not trying to do anything wrong, but we just want to educate on better ways we could use these substances. Right. And so people, if you're interested, it's Wednesday, April the 16th, 7 to 8.30 p.m. at the City Life Community Center, which is at 1515 Fairview Avenue. And it's free. Absolutely. It's free. We're going to have a lot of great experts. And then if you'd like to come early, we also have an amazing hidden in plain sight bedroom display, which is a, looks exactly like a teenage bedroom. And it's a mock display of some of the hidden dangers that might be in your teenage um, teenage teenager's bedroom that maybe you're just not quite aware of, oh. but you might want to talk to them about. And it gives you some tips and so tools. what to look for. Yeah, what to look for. Wow, okay. Very good. Yeah. And the website, if people want Miz more information. MissoulaForum.org. Perfect. Yes. And I just want to thank there it is. Good. I just want to thank our sponsors real quick, United Way of Missoula County and First Security Bank. Yeah, they appear on this poster. Yes. Oh, we could talk more. Scott says there's two minutes. Oh well, Scott, gee, thank ages. you very much. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but I mean this is you guys have been um, doing this sort of outreach for years now and it yeah. do you, do you get a feeling that it's really making a difference? Well, the hardest part about prevention is we don't usually get a lot of stories about yeah. who didn't do something. I didn't do this. So that's of you. very yeah. hard. <laughs> um, I think what I'm finding is is that when you talk about misuse, just like the three of us, we go, mm -hmm. oh, we could change that. It's nothing dramatic. You don't right. have to get rid of your prescriptions. You don't have to change your lifestyle. Uh, so I do see a difference in that. Um, the abuse rate is going up. And as yeah. we choose to focus on one su substance, so as we work on prescription drug abuse, uh, the heroin rate is now I going up. I was just up. reading that. We, t yeah. we tend to want our substances. Yeah. So if you try to take one yeah. away, unfortunately, a certain part of the population tends to use another one. But yes, I'd like to think we're making a difference. I, I say know, so. I know that you are. I know that you are. Well, this is a this is a great uh, ne next community conversation, yeah. yes. and uh, I think it's important for all of us to be talking about these sorts of things, yes. multi generationally. You know what I meant? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> great word. Grandpa through mom and dad right. and the kids. Right. The, lar the the target population for your meds being stolen 
or for selling them is senior citizens because um, oh. they have more. They yeah. keep them on yeah. their kitchen counter. So no grandparent means to be putting their grandchildren in harm's way, but, but it's just something we don't think of. And right. we want them on our kitchen table where it's easy to access. So I think it would just be a nice conversation and everybody can join in. Good. Great. Good Brandon, thing. thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. We better go. But we thank flew you through another for, hour. Yeah, staying with us this hour of Missoula Live. For MCAT, I'm Joel Bear. And I'm Kim Anderson. And we'll see you next time.